Hello. In this session, we are going to talk about levodopa, the key for Parkinson's disease. Levodopa is a precursor to neurotransmitter dopamine. Parkinson's essentially is a disease of dopaminergic loss. As we know, Parkinson's is a disease that is associated with movements, is because of the dysfunction in the dopaminergic system. And uh, levodopa is a precursor for dopamine, which is uh, actually necessary for uh, proper coordinated movements. And levodopa uh, is a drug of choice in Parkinson's disease, first drug of choice. Levodopa is converted into dopamine in the brain, thereby giving the anti-Parkinsonian effect. It is the first line treatment for Parkinson's disease combined with dopa decarboxylase inhibitors. Mechanism of action Dopamine as such whenever administered cannot penetrate the blood-brain barrier because of its hydrophilic nature. Levodopa on the other hand can pass the blood-brain barrier. Thus, levodopa is used to increase the concentration of dopamine in brain for the treatment of Parkinson's disease and dopamine responsive dystonia. Once levodopa has entered the central nervous system, it is converted into dopamine by the enzyme aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase, also known as dopa decarboxylase. So, this enzyme is uh, responsible for converting levodopa into dopamine into the brain. It is not clear whether the effect is because of increased release of dopamine from a few surviving dopaminergic neuron or on a flooding of synapse with dopamine formed elsewhere. So, uh, how do we get the anti-Parkinsonian effect is not clear as it is debated if it is because of increased release of dopamine from very few surviving dopaminergic neurons or immense flooding of the synapse with dopamine that is formed elsewhere. Because the synthetic dopamine agonists are equally effective, the flooding explanation is more correct as levodopa has been found to be effect effective in animal studies with no dopaminergic nerve terminals as well. Now essentially uh, levodopa is always, com always combined with carbidopa. A carbidopa is a dopamine decarboxylase inhibitor. Uh, so what happens is that uh, L-dopa is uh, uh, converted into dopamine in the blood because of the presence of the enzyme. Now carbidopa and other drugs in the same category block this conversion of L-dopa into dopamine and the same L-dopa because of its lipophilicity crosses the blood brain barrier where there is availability of dopamine decarboxylase. Now this dopamine decarboxylase which is present here is blocked by the drug. However, the drug are hydrophilic so the dopamine decarboxylase cannot uh, drugs inhibitors cannot cross the brain. So dopamine decarboxylase is freely available here but it is not available here because of drugs like carbidopa and benzeride. So what happens is as soon as L-dopa crosses the blood brain barrier it is immediately converted into dopamine and as we know that dopamine is required for the effect overall effect that we are talking of which will be giving the anti-parkinsonium effect. So what happens is Parkinsonism associated with decreased dopamine in brain through loss of neurons in basal ganglia. Carbidopa and L-dopa is the drug of choice. Uh, here I will like you to stop for a minute and write all the probable combinations of drugs you remember that are combined for pharmacokinetic reasons. Like here we are combining uh, levodopa and carbidopa so that the entry of levodopa is facilitated into the uh, brain. Similarly, think of combinations that are uh, combined together for uh, helping each other through the pharmacokinetic reasons. Pharmacokinetics of levodopa Absorption It is rapidly absorbed from small intestine using active transport process meant for aromatic amino acids. So there are certain pumps in the intestine that are specifically meant for the absorption of aromatic amino acids. 
distribution it's it has a plasma half of t uh, plasma uh, t half of 1 to t uh, 2 hours individually if we talk of the levodopa uh, entry into brain uh, by the time it enters it has spaced a lot of dopamine decarboxylase so only 5% around can enter however by taking it together with uh, dopamine decarboxylase inhibitor we uh, allow almost 70 to 80% of the drug to enter inside the drug has a high first pass metabolism in GI, gastrointestinal tract and mucosa. Metabolites are mainly excreted from urine after conjugation. Now if you talk of the adverse effect, uh, there are two categories or two types of adverse effect. One that occur at the initiation of the therapy and the other set of adverse effect that occur after the prolonged therapy. So in the initiation of therapy, you may be finding that the patient has nausea and vomiting. Uh, uh, there may be postural hypotension, uh, hypotension, cases of postural hypotension. Then there may be cardiac arrhythmias because of the dopamine. Uh, there may be exacerbation of angina and uh, some people also observe alteration in taste sensation. After prolonged uh, therapy, there is uh, abnormal movements, dyskinesia. Usually dopamine shows, levodopa shows its effect up to a certain point and after it the effects start to deteriorate. So dyskinesia is something that occurs at a later stage. Uh, there are certain behavioral manifestations uh, which are considered to be adverse effects and uh, there is a fluctuation in the motor performance. We have uh, presented here data taken from the book uh, Rangendale 7th edition. Essentials of Pharmacology KD3 Part 6 edition and Wikipedia. As they say, uh, it may shake me, but it can't break me. So, um, please take care of people around you who are facing Parkinson's disease. Thank you.